So you saw that. Oh, I'm gonna have to do this. Okay, that was my test. Okay, you guys. That's my name. My name's Matt. Um, end right. Uh, she talked all those nice things about Rio. I hate that they chose this theme for this month. It's really terrible for me. So we're going to get through it, right? Um, we're going to talk about endings. And uh, I'm going to take a picture because this is one of those things that I never do. Um, because in five minutes, you're going to be real bummed out. So. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let me introduce myself. That's my name. Um, this is my family. So uh, this is my crew. This is my wife, Amanda, my son, Elliot, and my daughter, Remy. We're not usually that tough or cool, but Bambi took that photo, and it's really cool. So that's my team right there. So I grew up uh, the son of a basketball coach and a special needs preschool teacher. So I never really said, I, I, people always ask, you come from a creative family, and I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe not. But then, like we read that manifesto, right? Everybody's creative, right? It's like a good cop-out way to say that. But uh, my parents are creative in their own ways. But I was born in Kansas. Um, then I moved to Indiana. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm very wholesome. Uh, I moved around a lot when I was younger. We moved probably like 10 times before I was even in school. I, moved, uh, I was probably in like six schools, like that kind of thing. That's just part of uh, my endings and beginnings and uh, my story. So about 10 years ago, um, this is, <laughs> I'll, I'll get to that. About 10 years, years ago, I went freelance. Um, it was really weird. Uh, the day before I went freelance, I had a job then I didn't have a job. And you just decide that you're freelance, right? So that's one of the ways you can go freelance. I thought it was really cool. This is like me thinking like, oh, I have all this freedom. I never wore those kind of clothes to work. And obviously, thanks for dressing up, right? But uh, I thought that was a cool idea. This is my house. So you, you think that's a really good thing, right? I'm just about a few months after we got this house, which we closed on the day before I lost my job, which is really funny. It's good, like it's better than the other way around, but uh, we got approved for it. But we've, uh, <laughs> so we, when you get a new house, it seems like sometimes you get pregnant pretty quick. So um, my wife is a third grade teacher for Fort Wayne Community Schools. Yeah, yeah, okay. I see some other teachers in here. All right, so um, it was at the situation where I can make a little bit of money on my own. You can stay home with the kids, or I can stay home with the kids. And that became my identity for like the last, uh, let's say seven or eight years. And then the last couple of years, my kids, as you saw, are in school now, like all day. They don't need me as much as they used to, right? That's ending in a really fun way. This is the way I'm just gonna start bumming you out now. All right, so then I made some work during this time. These are some prints I made individually, but and then I made this mural, and now I'm here. So uh, <laughs> thanks for asking me. Olivia and Kara, thanks for your help. I wish you would have changed the theme, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, so when, I, when they first told me about the theme, I was pretty mad. I was like, I had all these things I thought I wanted to tell everybody, and this is a way where I can't do that because I have to talk about the end, and then I whine to all my friends. I'm sure most of you I've talked to you about this, actually, at some point, and how I'm like, I don't know. I hate the idea of endings. It's like black and white. It's like the opposite of thinking creatively. Things don't end, like they just keep moving. Like, how do you talk about this? Like, people in Rio don't think about this stuff. Like, this is creative mornings, right? Anyway, they don't even have seasons, but uh, anyway. So we'll get through this. All right. This is the first thing I think of when I think of the end, right? Uh, right? Uh, the, I saw a guy on the corner the other day. <laughs> Repent guy, you know, whatever. My first thoughts are that endings are pretty much... All right, this is just a glimpse into who I am. 
low level depression always. But the endings are always pretty sad. Like even if you think of when you're young and the good endings are like happily ever after or you know the, the good guys win, like either you grow up and realize, oh, there's no no such thing as happily ever after. Sorry to burst anyone. You guys are all a lot younger than me, some of you, so. Uh, and then sometimes you're like, the story ends, right? That's not fun. Like, I like stories. I want them to keep going, you know? Um, try, it says I wrote down, don't be too depressing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we're all going to die, right? <laughs> it's, it's true, right? Uh, Relationships end, your body is going to break down. Like, um, predators eat prey, trees die. We kind of screwed up the world. Um, not kind of, we totally did. Um, what does it matter, right? This is how we're going to define endings. So, if we don't have any control over anything, right? Nothing matters. Okay? I don't believe this, but this is like the first, this is like what this is kind of saying, right? Should I take another picture now? Okay. <laughs> All right. So I painted this and it just that was a couple years ago, and I just like this really fit. Um, everything has to go. Because this is kind of a new way I started to think about it. It's like, okay. Once you get to that level where you accept all that, I had a change of mind. Endings are necessary parts of every process. Um, we all die, yes, that's true. There's a good uh Things end and kids grow up and don't need you anymore. <sighs> okay, but, but things like that, uh, things just end and maybe that's okay, all right? So think about like um, the best concert you've ever been in. Uh, Nate up here, whenever he plays any Medivari stuff, I'm always afterwards telling him, you gotta ride that beat out longer. You're just making it stop too quick. Like every, every time you know it's gonna end, I want it to be in that moment forever, right? You just want to hold on to things. That's natural. That's human. Um, we had a, I, I, every year I do this, we do this meal with a couple, bunch of my friends. And um, it was like a nine course meal that my friend cooks at his house. And we stay the night and we like put our kids to bed and start eating at like 930. Like we act like we're in Europe or whatever. And uh, it's really cool. And by, by the third course, you're like, this is like heaven. like. Nobody wants to go to bed. Everybody's had wine with every course, you know, like that kind of thing. And it's just amazing. But you know there's an end to this. There's a way you can think about that. There's a couple ways. So, like, once you realize that this stuff is true, people die, people get sick, people whatever, you can kind of look at it in two ways. You can either accept it or deny it. What? Closer to the microphone. Okay. Is that better? Sorry, guys. <laughs> so if you're going to deny it, this is understandable. It's probably the most naturally human part of dealing with endings is to just deny them, right? Uh, you know, like, this is a really dumb reference, but like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> All right. You just never, like, accepted that there's a next phase that you have to get to. Um, like. Matthew McConaughey and, you know, whatever. Uh, you get fundamentally stuck. You're kind of like dead, right? Because you're not moving anymore. You're not a part of the game. Yeah. So there's that way. I, uh, there's a lot of people that think about uh, what was better and make that the thing again. And that's one way to um, kind of be stuck and dead and not have any power for the future. It's just not reality. So um, I actually have a little bit, I'm a pretty vulnerable person when it comes to telling things. Um, when I, my first ad agency job was before that freelance picture I had. I worked there for five years. I probably should have worked there for like six months. Do you know what I mean by that? Like one, I was in my early 20s. There was still a lot of possibilities to download music all day. Um, I had, I was the only creative in the department, so nobody knew how long things took, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, so, so that was kind of one of my, uh, 
I was stuck. I didn't want to move to the next step, right? Um, and you can do that, or, and that's okay to think that way. This is stuff I write this a lot, and I just realized during this speech that I write this to myself a lot. It's okay. I'm going to give myself acceptance to one, move on, to cope with things if I have to. It's okay. I wrote it a lot on that notebook. It's funny, it was like five pages of just writing that. That's like murder person. Uh, <laughs> so you could also accept that endings are real, right? Everything changes. Like this will end. Luckily, this speech will end, or whatever. Uh, look at nature. We have seasons here. Um, that's what Rio, that's, they don't have that. I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, look at your life. You're here. You are not the same person you were 10 years ago, right? You're not the same person you were like maybe last year. Uh, and that's really good. It's really, really good. And the good thing is when you can do that with people that also want you to be a new person and can help you be that. So think about this room right now and who all of us are continually changing. Like, I can't believe everybody is looking at me. It's just crazy. All right, so <laughs> this stuff is really hard to think about. Um, it's ex existentially scary. I saw this sweatshirt. It's got a, the old Vancouver Grizzlies sweatshirt or the logo and it says like existential fear instead of Vancouver Grizzlies is the best sweatshirt ever. And I was just like, really, I, won't, I didn't buy it, but uh, these are the kind of things that just, it's there, right? We've known it forever that things change, evolution, whatever, but sometimes we don't get to choose when this stuff happens and sometimes we do. So, you know, like I lost my job, but I had already known I needed to move on. So that's one way to do it. Sometimes we get to choose, sometimes we don't, but we still need to grow when things are hard. And usually when things are hard is most obviously telling you when something's uncomfortable, oh, that's what I need to do, right? I'm, nobody, I'm not gonna say anything new here. Everybody's heard all these things before. But um, one of my fundamental fears of trying new things, I'm a very risk averse person. I am not a freelance stereotype personality whatsoever. I don't like to take risks. Uh, I don't make much money, I'm a little bit lazy, like all those things. Um, but I've been working for my home for long enough to realize that one of the things I need the most is other people in my life, um, in my daily interaction, especially now that my kids are gone for the day. Wow, it's quiet and I really need to bounce things off people. And um, so my fundamental fear is probably being alone, right? So like when I, that's what I think of when I want to take a risk, what if no one else wants to come with me? What if no one else supports that idea? Um, what if people don't want the person I'm going to change into? Does that make sense? <sighs> okay, so uh, one thing I'm, I'm really excited to tell you is that Nate and Mark right here, we just decided to not do that anymore, not be alone work alone anymore and we're gonna work to get have a start a studio together. No, well, work in a studio separately together. <laughs> but, but I'm really excited about that. Um, and that's like it's funny that it's happening this week of talking about this because um, like I said it's been ten years of working alone and I'm really excited about not being alone. Uh, endings are rebirth. Um, we get to remember what we take with us if we want we can take that and learn from that or we can leave it behind have you guys these are great references do you guys watch doctor who anyone watch doctor who it's like it's one of my favorite shows um the premise of doctor who is the doctor is this alien who looks like a human and when they first made the seasons like 60 years ago um the, the main actor was like kind of getting sick during the show and they they're like oh, how do we get a new show? We don't want to quit. Everybody likes this show. So they d t decided that they would make the main character regenerate, which is like a die, but become the same person. Uh, so you have the memories that you had before, but it's a new face, a new body and all that stuff. And that's really awesome to me because it's like you choose to remember these things, but you are totally new. 
everybody else might not notice you the way they used to. Does that make sense? Um, everything is a transition. Yeah. So the cycle is kind of like coming around here. Um, once there's an ending, we reset, right? Um, and those are the moments where I think creativity is born. So I thought this is the opposite of creativity, but now it's like the actual beginning of creativity. And when I try to define the creativity, have you ever heard the term ex nihilo? It's from something or from something from nothing, basically, is what it means. Um, and that's how I kind of define you're making something out of nothing is kind of like uh, like you guys made creative mornings. Just look at all these people like this is really cool out of nothing. Whoever made this when you make a painting or a, oh, I forget I might or a mural. This came out of nowhere. Like Dan just asked me, would you like to do a mural? And I was like, uh, <laughs> sure. How do I do that? You know, like, but you, you figure it out. And one of the really ways you do that is asking people to help you. And so that was how this kind of happened. And it was very fulfilling. Um, the other ways that I think about creativity is, um, this is the first um, repurpose type of thing I made. Uh, I really like collage and I really like taking things that nobody wants anymore and giving them a new identity and a new life. That's not the only way you can do this, but this, this was, a, I don't know where this is actually now. I think one of my friends took it and moved, but um, these are the kind of things that you make when you have something and you wanna give it a new life. Nobody wants these paintings. This middle one, I know this is not, nobody wants them now still, but like <laughs> <laughs> this middle painting, uh, I was sitting on a porch with a friend and this lady's like, hey, will you save this for somebody? I think they're gonna come through here. They bought it at my garage sale, but I have to go. And then if it's after over an hour, just keep it. Like obviously no one wanted it. The guy didn't show up and he paid for it. Like, so I just painted the LeBron jersey when I first went on there. So Basketball coach, right, is my dad. Uh, I make these paintings now. They're for people, they, they get real cheesy if you think about it, right? But some real things are cheesy. So uh, the people that I make these for, they all tell me they love them, like more than I love them. You know what I mean? Like they make some and they mean something for them. And it came from nothing or it came from something that didn't have a meaning before. So when I talk about um, endings, you should mourn them. That's okay, right? That's what I, my first definition was like, I think I told Lynette and Matt this the other day. I was like, endings are just continual mourning for what you wish that was still here. Like, I was really in a bad way when I talked about that one, but like, um, you remember what you wanna remember and then you don't. I painted this last fall. It's the first self-portrait I've done since like college when you had to do one. And uh, I'm really happy with it, but also it's totally for me, right? No one wants a self-portrait, right? Of someone else. Well, maybe not, but my mom probably would. She wants it. She's nice. Uh, but this was to commemorate that my kids don't need me anymore. I'm not crying. Or am I? I'm just sweaty and tired. And there's a swing set in the background. So that's like how I'm kind of dealing with endings. I didn't know I was doing that at the time, but that's how some work goes. Make things happen because, sorry, they don't always last. Um, but damn, please don't forget to enjoy what's next and what we have left. Um, I read a quote and I forget who it is during this time and it said endings to be useful must be inconclusive. So I think that's a kind of a fitting thing. I made this out of a child's toy. I made this out of a painting. I forgot about these. Anyway, so lately I've been using these two questions to define like what I want to do next. What, what matters to me? And it's the most basic question. And it's who am I and why am I here? And I feel like those are the two questions that I can ask when I'm feeling nervous, when I'm, when I'm trying to move on to the next thing. 
And for me, the who am I changes like daily, maybe <laughs> every five minutes because I'm very, I'm a feeler like that. So that's like a big thing. But the why am I here right now for me has been for the last year about, I just want to connect people. Okay. I want to bring people together, even physically. And that's what created mornings and stuff. So I'm so happy that the people who have talked here have done so good that I was nervous. Um, they really cared about it. And they have brought these people together. This room is incredible right now, if you think about it. Um, so you got to determine what your who am I and why am I here is. But I just wanted to say, that I think this is the most powerful room in Fort Wayne right now. Like seriously, look around. We might not have like money, <laughs> but like, <laughs> or jobs, some of it. But, but for real, like what is power, right? I think creative thinking is like insanely more powerful and more exciting, more interesting than what other people have. And I feel like we say everyone is creative. And I do believe that, like we all came from nothing and we are something. I'm not gonna get into the birds and bees, but like <laughs> at our core, we are creative. And I have a lot of um, tension with that. Like part of me is like, you know what, we are creative. If you're not doing anything, are we being creative? This is a challenge. That's not a, for sure, but I really think there is a difference. We can just sit here and call ourselves creative. I think that's what we did 10 years ago when graphic designers and artists were the, and, and like singers and we, we are the creatives, like you guys are not creative. And I think things are good because things are changing. People are thinking about themselves in creative ways. That can't be bad, in my opinion. So I want you to think about each other in this magical room right now. We create out of nothing. And together we can create endings. We've got writers in here. We can tell stories. We can make solutions. Maybe not one of us, but together. Like collaboration has been a big part of my last year. And I've learned a lot. It's a lot harder than working by yourself in certain ways because you have to give up some stuff. But think about how much more, if we all had an opportunity to talk and say our ideas, think about how much more we could do together, even if it's just two of us or a hundred of us. This room is, you need to know how good this is. I, this, is a, this is a thing. And it, it's one of those things, I don't want it to end, right? We can do things from our endings. We learn from this stuff and we change all the time. Um, so collaborate, get together, literally do the work that you're made to do. Um, change your mind to stop fearing what's possible ahead or what we need to end in our lives and surroundings and see the opportunities we have to grow and help and make this life more worthwhile. And not only for yourself, but for other people who can't do this stuff that we can do. At the end is near, right? So, what now? So, I would like to answer some questions if you guys have any. <laughs> So, I don't know if anybody else is like this. I, some projects take a long time, like maybe you're doing identity logo, logos for people or whatever. Um, sometimes that's like 15 revision, you know, like something crazy. And it's like a couple weeks. And then you're totally done, like mentally, you know what I mean? So, there's a difference between mentally and physically done with stuff. When I'm doing a mural, I know what it's going to look like at the end by the time I start it, pretty much. I don't usually change that too much. That's just the way I work. I know it's different for other people. Um, but I'm at the point where halfway through pretty much any big long project, I've, I feel like in my mental state, I've gotten to the, I've gotten what I need out of this. And so it's really hard because I'm not done yet physically with it. Like with this last mural, I was like, yeah, I'm letting these kids paint on the wall sometimes. I'm meeting the neighbors. Um, that's what I kind of wanted out of it. Um, obviously getting paid is an awesome bonus because that's not always the case that you get paid for that kind of thing. So it's like, um, 
finishing is also like part of the work that I have to do. So it's just one of those things where it's different per project. So like with the paintings I did or that like that little sculpture that, that was like really bright colors, that one was hard to determine when I wanted to stop because of the products where they were just not working out and stuff like that. It's a hard, sorry, that's a hard question to answer, but sometimes you just know, sometimes you just ask other people. Is this, what do you think about this? I'm a very, like I take a lot of, a lot of criticism. I want that, like I want other people to help me decide things. Like when Eden talked about her talk and talked about goal setting and like manifesting with that, I totally resonated with her because I don't set goals. Like I'm not very driven like in that way. Not a freelancer quality. Just if you're thinking about quitting your job, probably wait a little longer. But, uh, <laughs> but it's one of those things that really helps me with decision making. And the one thing I do wanna say, I'm talking a long time about that, but with work, um, that you make and then you hate like a day after or like a year later or that kind of thing. I think that's a pretty worldwide feeling about, not hate, but like, oh, that's not very good. You compare it to what you're doing now or, or whatever. I've actually learned how to not do that in a really awesome way. And it's, it's just saying I made that for that time and that was what was needed at that time and that's okay. And you can always paint over a mural. People who own buildings, you should do murals because you can always paint over them <laughs> if you don't like it. Anyway, sorry. So that's how I got. Well, I think one of the things is I think we have this mentality as creatives, maybe entrepreneur type group of people where, where we have to say this word networking all the time. And that kind of takes away, f I think that word sucks for a creative. Like, here, here's how I network. I'm, less, I'm, I'm different because I don't really compete with anyone. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a business, really, I am, but I'm not, no one's scared to get their stuff taken by me. So it's like one of those things where I'll just go up to somebody and say, I really like what you make. Just complimenting them. I've worked with people because I said that to people before. Like I've, and I'm genuine about it. Like I'm really happy when other people succeed and I'm really happy when I get to meet new people that I'm inspired by. And it's funny cause like anyone like if you came up to me and said that, I would be like, oh, no, like it's not that good. You know, like that, that kind of talk, everybody kind of feels that way. So I think that's the first step, I think. I think we got to get over this idea that we're not the same. Uh, we are, like we all understand each other in ways that we won't let ourselves like feel sometimes. And I really think that's a good key to, we need to just literally physically get together more. Like we're so disconnected. I mean, I, I hate my phone and it's one of those things like where social media is kind of also the way that I get work, but I hate it because it disconnects me from people and it doesn't show the real me. You know what I mean? It does, but it doesn't. And so everybody who's professional is like, we got, we're trying to make money, trying to survive, with Instagram, you know what I mean? Like, the, it's not a bad thing, but it's just, it could be better. And I do feel like more meaningful stuff is when you're in person talking to each other, or both, or you combine both of those things and just show up a real, a real reality.